Kyron, that was a tremendous win because in the first two sessions, you just couldn't get away from him. Yeah, I thought Dave, you know, was was queuing the ball really sweet, especially the the first two sessions. I think you know it was like one frame each, so it was counter punch after counter punch, and yeah, it just felt like I just had to keep mentally strong. You know, I didn't feel like I was totally at the races to be honest, but you know, I think that's a testament to my mental strength. You know, I didn't panic. I kept myself solid in my chair, and um, that allowed me to go on and obviously produce some good snooker when I needed to. And one or two mistakes began to creep in from him last night. And, and did you get a sense that was your mm. chance to pull away? Yeah, I felt like Dave was struggling last night for whatever reason. Obviously, it's a long old format, and you know, not to not to forget that Dave's been through some qualifying matches. So at some point, it's obviously going to hit you. It's, it's such a long event to sort of conquer. So obviously, I was coming into it a little bit fresher, and. You know, maybe the way I've gone through, I know Dave beat Luca 10-9. You know, I haven't had a decider um, as of yet. So, yeah, maybe a little bit of freshness um, just sort of pulled me through that. And a nice moment. I know you, you looked up to Sophie and the boys, gave it a little fist pump. It, it means a lot. I know you've been in a world final before, but this is post-COVID. You know, it was packed today. It will be packed tomorrow. It, me it, means, it means everything to, to get to this. This is the ultimate match in snooker, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, and I feel like I was kind of robbed of that from the 2020 final, obviously through the, the COVID pandemic, you know, robbed of the experience of experiencing the Crucible with a packed out crowd, having that buzz. You know, I cannot wait. It's something I've dreamed of doing, and, you know, I'm very grateful that I'm in a position that I can experience that again. Despite the COVID differences, how much better prepared do you think you'll be for an attack on the world title, having gone through that overall experience once already and, and, got, and got a few little scars, but a few lessons on board at the same time? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you get a good hide enough. Players like Ronnie O'Sullivan and John Higgins, it can, you know, it can go sort of one or two ways. I've decided to try and learn from them and, yeah, become a better all-round player. Um, you know, I don't panic like I, I probably used to back then. You know, if it wasn't quite going right for me, I might have shown a little bit of emotion. Um, now I don't really do that, and it just allows me to sort of release the shackles from time to time and just produce the snooker I know I'm capable of. In that final against Ronnie, you were a marginal underdog. Here, people are talking about you being the favourite because you were the only seed to make it into the last four. Is that something that you will be conscious of or is that completely irrelevant ahead of this final? I think it's totally irrelevant. I think, you know, you've got players like, you know, Stuart Bingham, Jack Jones that have beaten players such as Ronnie O'Sullivan and Judd Trump. Um, you know, they're no, no sort of small feats. So in their mind, they're going to have every right to be winning the title, just as I feel like I have. And isn't it interesting, you know, before we arrived here at the Crucible, Judd and Ronnie had won five each and they haven't made the final. Mark Allen had won three and obviously he's justifiably gone to world number one. Gary Wilson had won the Scottish and the Welsh. All three of you, as we're talking at the moment with Stuart and Jack still to finish their match, all three of you have without question played your best snooker of the whole season here in Sheffield. You've peaked at the right time. Yeah, and I think, you know, the Crucible is a different animal. You know, you can go into this tournament with no form whatsoever, or you can go into it with so much form and it doesn't quite happen. You know, we've seen that from many players in the past. Um, you know, I think Ronnie had a year out and, and came back here and obviously went on to win it. So it just shows you, you can peak at the right times. I decided to do something a little bit different this year. I went out to Portugal with the family, had sort of an eight day break, and I purposely allowed sort of two weeks bang on as sort of prep going into this year's World Championship. So I felt like I'd come in a little bit fresher. Um, maybe a few players have gone stale. You know, as you said, Ronnie and Judd in particular, and Mark Allen having such good seasons, there's only so much you can sustain sort of throughout the year. So, yeah, perhaps that's obviously held me in good stead for this year's Worlds. And will you try and make a conscious effort to enjoy and savour the experience? Because life is precious, time is short, and... Of course, you might be in three or four more world finals, mm. but you might not. And they're, they're very, very, very special occasions that only the chosen few ever experience. Yeah, you know, I'm lucky enough that I've, I've obviously already experienced it. And, you know, I've had so many one table setups now here over the sort of the modern era, if you like. You know, I've built up quite a good little record here. So, yeah, I'll obviously I'll enjoy it. But listen, there's still a, a massive task at hand, a big job to do. So, you know, I don't want to get too, too far ahead of myself. 
Well done today, Kyron, and I hope you get a massive ovation from the crowd. It'll be a it'll be a wonderful uh, honour to, to introduce you to a packed you. house this time. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a very special weekend. Cheers, Rob. Thanks, fella. Thank you.